Welcome to the Citrix Healthcare Summit 2021. My name is Dimitri Petropoulos. I'm a principal systems engineer here at Citrix covering large enterprises accounts on the West Coast. And I'm Shane Smith. I'm a senior enterprise architect on the customer success enterprise architecture team covering the public sector accounts in the Americas. And we're going to be covering zero trust security and the power of contextual access. Some of the goals for today's session are to define zero trust and contextual access, understand what a Citrix zero trust solution looks like, and highlight the benefits to healthcare specifically. In detail, I'm actually going to be going over the issues facing healthcare, defining zero trust and contextual access, and Shane's going to be go going over the getting started section, talking about the Citrix specific solution and our SASE architecture. And finally, we'll wrap up with how Citrix zero trust is beneficial for healthcare. So let's start by discussing some of the issues facing healthcare. Some of these issues are ones that we've faced for a long time, right? We have to maintain HIPAA compliance. We have to safeguard and protect personal health information, social security numbers, addresses, birth dates, all things that are valuable to attackers are all the specific data that healthcare has in their possession. There's some new things that we have to uh, deal with today, especially in the new normal after COVID-19, particularly working from home for telehealth scenarios of doctors, as well as new uh, pop-up clinics that we have to take care of. These new environments are no longer within our traditional security perimeter. They're no longer within our hospital, within our clinics, and now we have to figure out a way to secure those networks and do it in a way that is not disruptive to our clinicians. And along the way, we have to make sure that we're protecting ourselves against ransomware attacks against our infrastructure. Healthcare specifically is uh, targeted by ransomware folks, uh, attackers specifically, they love healthcare. Uh, a patient record can be up, worth up to $1,000 for them if there's enough data in there. And a lot of our systems have that data in them. They specifically love attacking healthcare because of the following items. We have a lot of legacy applications in our network that can never go down. We can't take the time to patch these systems because the hospitals never close. The patients never stop coming. We also have these new medical devices that we didn't have access to before. Some heart rate monitors and blood pressure monitors are sitting on the floor on Wi-Fi, wide open to the network. And these devices, while they may have been secure when they were first purchased, that firmware may not have been patched and now there's vulnerabilities on them, but they're still sitting on our network. This also leads into the next two points where we may not have enough IT staff on hand to patch these devices, assuming we can take them offline and they're not constantly in use. The next problem is we may not even have enough funding if we do have the staff to uh, patch these systems and take care of them, really leaving us in a, in a vulnerable state. So how, what do we need to do about this? we need to look at a new security paradigm. And that security paradigm is referred to as zero trust. You may have heard of it a lot recently. It's a new buzzword industry-wide, um, but I think it'd be really good to describe what zero trust is. And before we can do that, we need to talk about what trust itself is. And trust is really a relationship between two, two entities. And that relationship is predicated on the fact that I know who you are and I trust that you have good intentions. So for example, if I invite you over to my house for dinner, it's because I trust you enough to have you in my home. But let's say, for example, you're a malicious actor masquerading as a friend of mine. You come in my house and you steal something. Now I've lost trust in you and it's gonna take a lot of time to rebuild and repair that trust if it's even possible to repair it. So how do we take the paradigm of trust and apply that to an IT security architecture? Well, in the traditional way, we talk about the castle and moat concept where everything within your network is trusted. All the PCs, all the computers on wheels, all the printers, projectors, who knows whatever is sitting in your network and is assumed to be safe. The problem with this is it creates an excessive level of trust where not every action on the network is checked. So if you're open on the network, your printer is sitting there with open ports on it, it can be attacked and then it can be used as an attack vector. If you remember the blaster worm back in the day, you had to shut off every single computer in your network and let the network settle before it would get off your systems. There was no way to clear it out. 
but that's on your protected internal network. So if your devices are compromised, it's not necessarily safe. Now in the new normal, we're working with users who are at home. They're at a, a remote, a remote pop-up clinic and they need access to that internal network that, that inside the castle. And the way we traditionally do that is through a VPN. And now what a VPN does is effectively poke a hole in the castle wall. So now you may be working from a, a MacBook at home that has been compromised. You don't know it's been compromised, but you go ahead and connect it to our trusted network. And we now have a compromised system on our network, which can then go and hop from system to system. So it's really not the best way to, to do this moving forward, but it's what we've always done. In fact, it was done this way at some of the largest tech companies in the world. Um, and in 2009, there was a sophisticated attack that hit a bunch of them, including Google. After this attack, Google decided to try and reevaluate the way that IT security was done internally. And effectively, they came up with three main points. The first is there is no internal network anymore. Everything on the internet is part of our network. Now, if everything on the internet is part of our network, how do we control access to our real internal data from our employees or our contractors or our clinicians? The way we do that is through context. We provide a contextual response to a bunch of different factors, specifically who you are and what device you're coming from. Alongside that, we need to make sure that every single action, every single request for data, and every single user is authenticated every step of the way. And all of the data is encrypted in flight and at rest. So if we look at this from a, a higher level view, what are the guiding principles of zero trust? Specifically, it's never trust your friends. Always make sure you know who they are, they actually claim to be, and that they're looking to do what they should be doing. In an IT scenario, we want to make sure that the user has appropriate credentials, they have their two-factor token, the device they're on is secure, and whatever application they're trying to get access to, they're supposed to have access to it. The next step is to assume that we're being attacked, because we probably are being attacked. So what do we do in that situation? We heighten our defenses. We make sure everything is locked down and every single request for data is authorized and verified. To do the verification, we wanna make sure that our multi-factor authentication is turned on, our contextual access is being used, our zero trust platform is being used. So that actually brings up a good point. What is contextual access? Well, contextual access is all about adapting to change. So if we look at the, go back to second grade and talk about the five W's, right? Who is trying to access this data? What data are they trying to access? When are they trying to access it? And where are they trying to access it from? And if we're lucky, we can determine why they're trying to access this data. If we can figure out all five W's, we can then provide just enough permission for them to access just the right data at just the right time which is very different from how we used to do things. Let's say the administrators on the network, they just have blatant access to everything. But if that administrator is compromised somehow or their credentials are compromised, they now have unfettered access to the network. In a zero trust contextual access scenario, instead that administrator only has enough access to the data at the right time, not all the time. So if we look at a contextual access scenario in a zero trust architecture, there's these five components that we really need to think about. First is the application. What are we trying to access? And two, who's trying to access it, the user. And these next three components are really important. We need to understand the network that they're coming from and the network that they're going to. Even though I said previously that we don't have a protected network and an unprotected network, it's still important to know what IP address the origination is from. We may block certain origin IPs. We may not allow external IPs or internal IPs to a certain resource. We also need to know about the device. Are they coming from a PC that's managed, an unmanaged Mac? Are they coming from an iPad? Is this the first time this device is connected from this user? We need to know all of this so that we can provide the correct response. And finally, we need to know where this user is coming from. And the reason for that is, is kind of interesting. So for example, 
Uh, I was on vacation for two weeks and Monday morning at 8 a.m. I log in in Santa Clara from my house, like I always do. And then an hour later, the system sees a login from my credentials in China. Unfortunately, we have not figured out teleportation yet, so I can't get to China in an hour. So that login is probably not authorized. So in that situation, my user account is accessing an app I'm supposed to have access to from a different IP and a different location. And because of that, the contextual response can be, let's prompt for a second factor or a third factor even, or let's deny access this time, or let's turn on session recording. There's a bunch of different levels of, of responses that can be provided based on these different contexts. So really when we talk about contextual access and a zero trust architecture, it's all about the principle of least privilege. You need to be able to provide access to the data to the user who needs it, but only when they need it and only the minimum amount of data that they need to have access to. Now you may be asking, how do we actually accomplish this? Well, I'm going to hand it over to Shane, who's going to be able to talk a little bit about how the Citrix platform can provide a zero trust solution for healthcare providers. Excellent. Thank you, Dimitri. So now that we've we've had a chance to really understand and, and you know we've defined the security challenges that you know healthcare IT is facing today, and you know we've learned a little bit more around trust, zero trust and contextual access and understanding what that means. Let's illustrate and let's walk through what a Citrix Zero Trust solution you know, actually provides, what those key benefits are, and how this relates back to healthcare IT challenges. So Citrix Cloud unifies the, the Citrix offerings that really make up a Zero Trust environment, you know, joining SaaS and managed app delivery, secure internet access, uh, you know, connecting branch and data center locations into a single solution. The solution is built and it's provided by three Citrix cloud services. That's Citrix Workspace Access, Secure Internet Access, and SD-WAN. Each of these services bring a comprehensive set of features and protections for securing access to both data and the devices that users are using every day, whether it's on the corporate network or they're at home and across the world. So let's take a look at secure workspace access. And what Citrix Secure Workspace Access does is it, it enables administrators to provide a unified experience that really integrates single sign-on, remote access, and content inspection all into a single solution for end-to-end -end access and control. IT administrators can then control access to approved SaaS applications and uh, you know, and managed applications, both through, you know, a simplified single sign-on experience. With this, uh, the Citrix Secure Workspace Access Service, administrators can also protect the organization's network and end-user devices from malware and data leaks by filtering access to specific websites and website categories. Administrators can then enforce enhanced access security policies for secure access to SaaS applications. And once those users are you know, authenticated, uh, employees have the access to all of their critical business applications. And you know, that can happen from any device, irrespective of whether you know, they're in the office um, or if they're at home uh, in a pop-up clinic or you know even traveling to you know a disaster location where you know doctors or nurses you know need to go and see patients um, one of the other benefits is that you know administrators they can monitor user activities such as malicious dangerous or unknown websites that are visited including the bandwidth that is consumed and looking at you know risky download or upload behaviors and this uses analytics you know around those websites and the the website categories that are being accessed 
administrators can take you know corrective action to protect the enterprise network um, and at the same time you know the service providers uh, or the service provides end users seamless and secure access to all of these hosted apps the citrix secure workspace access can integrate with your existing adc deployment to provide the same multi-factor authentication that is being used today if you're using a virtual apps and desktops environment or even a Citrix endpoint management environment and provides contextual access to those authorized resources. And lastly, another benefit here is you know, the ability to provide a secure browser isolation for suspicious and risky websites and then also protects against screen capture, utilities, and, and key loggers. We'll touch on that in one more segment here. So let's talk a little bit around the, you know, the key capabilities uh, regarding control and protection. So through publishing of the SaaS and IT managed applications, users no longer need to connect to, uh, you know, a traditional VPN client. And what that does is it actually further secures the corporate network so that you don't have, you know, a managed or even an unmanaged client that is directly connected on a, you know, a, a part in a segment of your network. So, you know, having a VPN-less solution there reduces that attack surface. An important component to Zero Trust is providing that contextual access. So while an authorized SaaS app is considered safe, you know, content inside of the SaaS app can be dangerous. When a user clicks on a link within the SaaS app, the traffic is routed through the web filtering features and it provides a risk assessment of that link. Based on the link's risk assessment and customized list of URL categories, the web filtering feature either allows, denies, or it redirects the link. And when it redirects the link, that redirects it to, you know, from the user's browser, and it opens it up in the secure browser service. And we're basically at that point, the user's browsing activities are isolated from the endpoint device, the corporate network, and the SaaS application. Unified access with single sign-on is a, another key benefit here. Once the user's authenticated to the Citrix workspace with their primary identity, um, basically, once they launch other you know, SaaS applications, uh, subsequent authentication challenges to the SaaS or those web apps, those are automatically fulfilled by using the single sign-on feature in Citrus Cloud using SAML assertions. And lastly here, administrators can also set enhanced security policies for SaaS apps. For example, if I have an application and I want to make sure that I've got a watermark on it because it's it's a sensitive patient record, um, or if I want to you know restrict copy and paste functions from inside of that application so I'm not moving um, you know medical charts or X-ray you know images from one application to another, uh, or even if I want to prevent downloads so that when I'm viewing those types of data um, I'm not able to download it to my you know to my endpoint device. Uh, it allows you to protect the content so that, you know, organizations, they can incorporate these enhanced security policies within the SaaS application. It doesn't have to just be that, that managed, um, you know, medical application that's hosted on-prem. It can be one of these SaaS apps as well. And each policy enforce, enforces a restriction on the embedded browser for when using the Workspace app for desktop, or it could be the secure browser when using Workspace app for web or mobile. And then lastly there, as touched on previously, you know, we talked about the app protection feature. Um, so really what that does is it allows us to protect the application from any of that sensitive data from, you know, whether it's intentional or unintentional uh, screen capture software, key log or malware that might reside on that device. It really protects it so that those types of tools, they don't actually capture any data. The key logger will see just uh, more or less hashed or encrypted types of keystrokes that more or less make no sense. And then, you know, from a screen capture software, all they're going to grab is a, a black screen, essentially. So it's protecting from actually seeing any data. And on to 
Citrix Secure Internet Access. So Citrix Secure Internet Access is a cloud delivered service that provides secure access to web and SaaS applications globally. It protects a complete, uh, provides a complete stack of security capabilities, such as secure web gateway, cloud access security broker, malware protection with sandboxing capabilities, intrusion prevention and detection systems, and data loss prevention. In all of these services, they're all centrally managed and available through Citrix Cloud. So let's review some of these key features and benefits of secure internet access. So to start, let's look at the, the unified management. Um, and what that does is it provides a holistic view and enables us to you know, configure granular control over the comprehensive security capabilities provided in this single platform. So I'm not having to jump through different sites or consoles, uh, you know, at different locations where I can figure these policies. You know, it, it's all through the same Citrix cloud control platform, and it allows you to configure each one of these uh, down based on whether it's a specific user, a specific user group. Um, we have a lot of granular control around that. Next is the efficiency, and this one's key. And one of the nice things is, you know, it's actually very simple to deploy and fast to deploy. So one of the other efficiencies to that as well, and we'll talk about deployment in a minute. Uh, the other efficiency here is actually to the traffic efficiency because this is running through what we call a single pass architecture. What that means is that traffic going through the service is decrypted once. All of the security controls are applied before re-encrypting the traffic. So we're not having to hit multiple, you know, proxies, if you will, right? It's going through the single pass uh, architecture, applying all those controls and then re-encrypting to, re to go out towards the, uh, the SaaS or managed application. Next is the reliable performance. And you know, this, this benefit is really around, you know, automated updates to all the latest protections against security threats. So, Again, we're not having to, you know, manage physical hardware, um, applying firmware updates to it, you know, updating security definition files. Uh, the platform itself is, you know, updating automatically with all of those latest pr uh, protections against known threats. And then with, with imp uh, an importance on privacy, right? That's another big one. Uh, each customer's data that's going through the service, each of those are processed through separate gateways. So we have segregation happening through the service. And you know, that's also good for say like uh, you know, different types of compliance so that we're not putting it through a, uh, a, single, uh, you know, a single shared type of service. It's, it's per each enterprise customer has their own dedicated gateway. And for GDPR compliance, you know, data is locally inspected and also logged. Citrix Secure Internet Access provides uh, a better remote working experience as well. And you know, what we're doing is essentially we're moving the network security to the cloud. And what this does is, you know, the user's resources, their applications are already living in the cloud. So it's actually bringing the security closer to the users and where they're using those apps. Uh, and also the service Citrix Secure Internet Access has, you know, 100 points of presence, more than 100 points of presence across the globe. So we'll touch on also the, the access here in the deployment, and you'll see that, you know, no matter where the user is at, they're able to get into the service efficiently. So as you can see, there's a wide, a wide array and variety of security protections that can be configured in each module. So let's take a look at the deployment options. Your users might have access to, uh, you know, they might be accessing unsanctioned web and SaaS applications, say for example, from a virtual desktop, you know, using Citrix Workspace, or they could be at home or in a remote location on a, you know, a physical laptop or, or uh, Windows or PC device or from a branch office, uh, you know, uh, at their, their home, branch office location, hospital, doctor's office. And really regardless of the method of direct internet access to the user, 
you know, we're able to redirect that traffic through Citrix secure internet access. So let's take a look at the, the virtual apps and desktops use case. And we achieve this by, you know, installing the, uh, the cloud connector agent on that virtual delivery agent. And what it does is it allows us to redirect all of their internet traffic to the secure internet access service. And this applies to Citrix VDI, uh, hosted shared desktops, as well as published applications. And what we're able to do is leverage not just that I know this is a, a VDA in the environment, I know that my user is logging into it, I can see and use their identity so that whenever I'm applying different policies to that, I'm not doing it just the, to the machine, I'm doing it to the user. So this ties back into contextual access. If I have a, a user that is logging into uh, a, a VDI resource or even on, let's say, a hosted shared desktop, we're going to set a certain number of policies and rule sets against that user so that they can, you know, can access the sites that they need to uh, perform their duties. But if I've also got another user that is on the same machine, they might be, um, you know, in a different department where they might need to access social media, where normally that would be locked down. So we can provide different access based on who the user is, even though they might be on, you know, a shared type of resource. And then for users that are on that native browser sitting on a, you know, a host system locally that's out of managed IT's control, you know, we can secure access for those users on that device by also installing the cloud connector agent. Again, it redirects that internet access and that traffic through the secure internet access service. Uh, again, the, the cloud connector agent there, it authenticates the user and then it'll install any appropriate certificates for SSL decryption. Um, that cloud connector agent is available for iOS, Mac OS, Android, Windows, and Linux devices. And lastly, for the branch offices, um, you've got you know, users that are sitting on site and we need to secure access to you know, these internet, web apps, SaaS apps, and applications. And we're going to do that using Citrix SD-WAN. And Citrix SD-WAN helps redirect that traffic for the entire site location into Citrix Secure Internet Access. And this occurs through an IPsec or a GRE tunnel without the need for a cloud connector agent. So we have a, a variety of deployment options, and it's easy to steer traffic from the user's device or on the corporate network into Secure Internet Access Service. And you know whether you need to install the cloud connector device or you're configuring an IPsec tunnel, it's a quick time to deploy because you know we we are actually able to do some automated configuration. Um, you know whether we're using a proxy auto config file, there's integration within the secure and access service to deploy down into SD WAN as well, and then you can quickly gain insight into those networks. So let's take a look at a few benefits for Citrix SD-WAN and Secure Internet Access together. So both of these services, you know, they can be managed in the same plane uh, or the same pane of glass inside of Citrix Cloud. So we're, we're unifying again so that the administrative experience is, you know, really easy to, to, to do and complete. As a result, you know, all traffic and users are protected within a combination of network security and, you know, security architectures inside one platform. Citrix SD-WAN automatically creates secure connectivity to the closest secure internet access points presence, right? Those, those over 100 points of presence there that we talked about earlier. And it also achieves redundancy, you know, both at the tunnel level and through multiple links to the primary and secondary secure internet access pops. The service also provides that automated configuration capability and that helps speed up the time to deployment. Um, using both SD-WAN and secure internet access increases the network visibility to minimize what are known as blind spots. And blind spots really are, you know, maybe those areas of the network where a device is able to, you know, get out to the internet or do something that is again inside the castle, right? Where we've just, we've trusted everything and we're assuming that. So this allows us to get visibility into there and, and perform the inspections. With SD-WAN 
and secure internet access together, we can provide a consistent and secure user experience wherever the user works and no longer require security hardware to be deployed in those, those areas, you know, which requires costly administrative overhead for managing the hardware, performing routine updates, and you know, getting the latest protection definitions on those appliances. All right, let's take a, a quick look into Citrix Analytics. So Citrix Analytics is divided into three solution areas. We have security analytics, performance analytics, and usage analytics. So security analytics, that's where we're preventing you know, internal attacks, data exfiltration attacks through user behavior security analytics. Uh, we're, we're protecting applications from external attacks as well and you know, track sensitive files via different DLP engines. Usage analytics provides the insight into just the basic usage of your Citrix products so that you, know, you can take a look and see you know, how many users are in the system and using what products and applications. And then performance analytics that really monitors the end-to-end -end user and app performance and then also highlights any detected issues that might be experienced inside of there. So Citrix Analytics, it's, it's a cloud-based service and it works across the different Citrix products and even third-party products. It helps gather data from these products or what we call data sources. And it uses built-in machine learning so that we can detect anomalous behavior of user or any other entity. And then it monitors and troubleshoots user sessions and views usage metrics for users and share links across an organization that use Citrix products. There's also basic and advanced reporting capabilities that tie in the solution areas and products all together for that, that unified visibility experience. Lastly, we'll talk about the, uh, the Citrix Secure Access Service Edge architecture. With Citrix SD-WAN, Citrix Secure Workspace Access, Citrix Analytics, and Citrix Secure Internet Access, these all form the pillars of the fully integrated Secure Access Service Edge uh, solution that is provided by Citrix. Citrix Secure Internet Access provides that secure access to web and SaaS apps inside and outside of the Citrix workspace, you know, irrespective of the user's location. It adds an extra layer of protection for Citrix workspace users and also integrates with Citrix SD-WAN for a fully converged Citrix network and security solution. On top of it all, there's the unified management through Citrix Cloud that enables faster deployment times less time configuring the solution, and a single pane of glass experience for administrators. Now a brief look into how this is actually configured and what it looks like for the administrator. So we're going to take a look at Citrix Secure Internet Access. And when you log in here, you're able to see through the cloud, Citrix Cloud Administrative Console, your Citrix Secure Internet Access service card. And once you click on Manage there, you're gonna actually be able to uh, be brought to this network dashboard. And what it does is it instantly shows you, you know, all the insights into the health of your network. Um, shows you the insights and health of the deployed nodes and connectors, as well as reviewing any incidents or usage metrics. From the configuration section, you're gonna have a wide array of you know, security features to choose from. So starting with web security, from here, you can configure all of your web filtering options for your organization, apply them to the appropriate user and groups. Uh, from here, you're gonna have granular controls into allowing you know, or disallowing web categories or URLs, also creating different policies on what happens when a user is blocked by a specific site. Next, we're gonna look at the data loss prevention feature. And inside of here, what you're going to get access to is configuring the different rule sets that can be applied again through users or groups of users. And the DLP module, it, it provides protection against unauthorized cloud use and sensitive data loss. It includes built-in detection of 
personally identifiable information, credit card information, and other content. You can create these custom search patterns and content types to meet your needs. And then lastly is the reporting and analytics. What this does is it's a dashboard and it provides access to real-time web hits over the last 30 or 60 seconds. And it gives you insight into any malware blocks, infections, or other suspicious activity. And finally here, the securing users from anywhere, which is really important in, uh, in, in 2021. The ability to secure users wherever they work is really critical. And you know, protecting access to data and network security is even more critical. So with Citrix Zero Trust and this solution, you're able to achieve all of this through that unified security stack. Having remote users on BYO hardware, uh, IT managed devices, it provides insight and protection from anywhere in the world. Now I'm going to hand it back over to Dimitri to look at the key benefits to healthcare and to, to hit our closing. Thanks, Shane. <clears throat> so when we talk about Citrix Zero Trust for healthcare, we really want to talk about the key benefits, specifically secure remote access to patient records, specifically telehealth and remote visits. Shane was able to show us the different platforms that can help facilitate this. And most importantly, we're able to do this in a single pass architecture with unified management. That allows us to have a reduced IT footprint on a cloud offering and have a quick time to market for you all to get this up and running. With over 100 POPs globally, doctors can work from anywhere and get access to this, the patient records securely through a zero trust architecture. The nice thing about this is it's part of the Citrix workspace. So if you're already familiar with Citrix apps and desktops, it is a seamless and familiar user experience across the board. And the ability to bring your own device helps reduce IT costs and, and keep users happy on the devices they like to use. So if we bring this back to the beginning on the challenges facing uh, IT, maintaining HIPAA compliance has always been a challenge, but now with Citrix secure workspace access, we're able to have better control over those records. As far as safeguarding protected health information, again, with secure workspace access, we can provide contextual access safeguarding that information across the board. In 29, or 2021, adapting to work from home and remote work scenarios, secure workspace access and secure internet access provide secure access from wherever you are to those patient records. The security perimeters that we talked about in the beginning can be controlled using secure internet access and SD-WAN, providing a pleasant user experience across the board, again, doing it in a secure manner. And finally, the malware protection that SIA provides can help us reduce the chances of malware attacking our IT infrastructure and taking our patient data away from us. And with that, if you'd like to learn more about any of these solutions, we have some uh, resources available for you at success.citrix.com, including a plan builder, which is really beneficial and helpful in this situation. Uh, Tech Zone is a great resource if you want to get really deep into the weeds and figure out how to configure this and have instructional videos along the way. And something new that we've released is the Clickdown, which is a fantastic uh, podcast that we have um, on all the different podcast providers that you can get access to, listen to people like me and Shane talk about stuff for hours at a time. Hopefully you enjoy our voices. And I think that's all we've got, Shane. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. Thanks, Dimitri. And thank awesome. you all for joining. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. And uh, if you have any questions, you can meet us in the, the chat room on the side.